Now we're after an epic evening here in Crow Park and I'm joined by Offaly's Dahi Regan to try and make sense of what we've just seen. Uh, where do we begin? Well, I suppose we begin at the beginning and just say after 15 minutes that game looked like it was going away from Clare. Everything was going textbook for Galway. They put Lynn on the edge of the square. He was causing mayhem. Clare's puck outs had disintegrated completely. The first two of the first four were, were, were picked up and uh, Joe Canning and Conor Whelan got a couple of great scores from that. There was no pattern to Clare's game. Conlon was getting no change out Dahi Burke. Uh, it just it, it was difficult to see at that stage how clear we're going to get back into it because they had no foothold in any line on the field and then they just made a couple of really really smart changes they dropped galvin back center back they brought kelly out into the middle of the field and like that the whole thing just switched and i noted that the scores from the 18th minute on that they, they outscored galway i think eight points to four coming up to half time when you just sense something was happening galway got the first point of the second half clear responded and all hell broke loose it was Arguably, arguably the greatest second half in the game of hurling I've ever seen. It was that good. They could never get their noses in front, Clare. Galway got ahead. I think there was four occasions they went two or three ahead. And you felt, that, oh, that's it. They've broken the resistance. And they come back and they brought it level. Galway went three ahead again. And you thought, the back is broke on this again. And they came back and hit another three. And then the final, the final two to three they hit, just with time coming up. You know, it was crescendo after crescendo, the noise from the crowd. And you just realised that you were watching something very, very special, which it was. You can argue, you know, did anybody play badly? Everybody did good things at times during the game. I mean, the spine of the Galway team was taken out of it. I mean, it's, 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 it's allegedly, uh, it's, it's like walking wounded down there in the Galway dressing room. But I was really impressed with, very much with Clare's staying, staying power and staying ability and fitness level and conditioning when Galway players were going down and going off injured Clare were still motoring I mean Galway got the first two points uh, at the start of the, 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 the first half of extra time one was a free from Joe Canning straight from the throw in and the second was a line ball Clare had six shots on goals in the first half before they actually got a score they they arguably could have been out of sight in the first half but they never lost their composure and that was no more epitomised by the score that they got I think 30 odd seconds over time where they worked it up the field three or four passes created the overlap and actually John Connell was inside screaming for it and I looked at him out of the corner of my eye and I thought there's actually a goal on here but correct decision was taken to put it over the bar because everybody was going frantic in the press box you were you were losing your mind everybody no I wasn't I deny that sure. everybody <laughs> I can assure you Marie Trace was losing her mind everybody around was neutrals in the Brian, Brian Carty from RTE was sitting there just as a spectator and he was aghast and there was a couple of Galway boys in front of us and they were scratching the head and Considine of course the lunatic from Clare was there and it was just phenomenal but have you ever witnessed an atmosphere in an All-Ireland semi-final like it with the crowd they just ebbed and flowed and every catch every block every score people were on their feet and there was roars of Galway, Galway and then Clare, Clare. It was an extraordinary day, wasn't it? It was just an extraordinary day and the level of hurling, some of the scores, Duggan's point under Hill 16. Point of the season nearly. Point of the season. I went in, I went in, I went inside at, at the end of the game uh, to take a look at the TV before they came back out for the second half and I didn't realise he struck it without taking it in the hand and I think a lot of us here that were here didn't realise it till we saw it on TV and the use and as from everybody it was not every day you get this it's not every day there's so many talking points it's not every day you get an All-Ireland semi-final of this magnitude and it, it was that good now the first half was good that's all good but the second half ex- exploded into life and it was just one of one of one of one of the greatest occasions I've ever had the, the privilege of being in Crow Park and it was, it was sensational great scores great everything it's funny, when we were all previewing this game, we all said, on paper, Galway were the ones who should win it. You know, they didn't, even if they weren't all firing in all cylinders and that kind of thing, Clare needed everything to go right for them to win. But funnily enough, and we all spoke about Galway's physicality and their size and the difference between their size and the Clare size, yet it's Galway now who are walking, you know, wounded, limping into buses and that kind of thing. Gareth McInerney, from what I can guess, probably won't be back. I don't know what the story is with Joe Canning. There's a few others as well. So Clare... 
I don't know how they managed it, but they managed to hurt them in the place where Galway we thought would be strongest. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting point, and there's 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 a lot of merit to it. Now I do think in the first half there was a lot of times with one on one physical battles that Galway's physicality. Put it like this: when it was in a heap and a clear forward got it, they weren't breaking a tackle. No player, clear player was able to get inside, and that was pretty evident in the first 15 minutes. I mean, the first ball John Connellan got in in 90 seconds, it was intent. It was head down, and he was making a point. He was going for goals, and you thought, I love Connellan, love to see him at this. No, he was getting nowhere. Galway were very physical. But what Clare did then, when they changed their structure around, they opened it up, and they did what we suggested for the second half. They, They played to in on the edge of the square and they played sensible ball in but what they did was they they, they travelled they, they offloaded the ball superbly pop passes at speed David McInerney I thought it was immense full back and really they just came, kept coming in droves at Galway and a mental fatigue comes in first of all and when that comes in you know the mind when the mind is, is tired it's hard to keep the legs going and I looked at the age profile of Galway. Garage McInerney is 27 years of age. Joe Canning is 29. Young and young. It's young. Young players. But mileage up. Joe Canning has a hell of a lot of mileage up. And he has been carrying injuries. And Joe Canning has missed a number of games. You know, and carried knocks and carries injuries. And he ships a lot of injuries. So, Clare were just relentless in the way they went at him. You're, you're correct to point that out. But I, I, I thought to myself, with 10 minutes to go, I thought... Clare's fitness here is just incredible. And I looked, Clare were making substitutions, strategic substitutions. Galway were making substitutions out of necessity because guys were going down. And all of a sudden you're looking at this game and why do we all think Galway would win it? Well, if you apply logic and if you're pragmatic when you're way up these games, the logic said it was going to be Galway and that's quite understandable. But the key thing with Galway was the key return they were getting was off Glynn inside. Now, they have a really good forward line, but the key return was off Glynn. And then when they tried to bring the other forwards into it, they were really commanding it. And it was off Glynn that they got most of it. And you kind of say to yourself, well, Michal Dunham will be looking and going, hold on, we're not a team that launches it down and a guy in the edge of the square six foot five all day, like Tony Dorn years ago or Joe McKenney years ago and things like that. You're kind of saying, G- Galway weren't able to, to figure out this puzzle this jigsaw that Clare put in front of them and the way Clare dropped back in the numbers and the smart hurling that Clare had where they always found a spare man and Galway couldn't, could never figure that puzzle out and it was always route one now they got some joy on him in the second half when they brought him out with Shane Amori who was so game under the puck out but he, he, he mined good scores or good scores came off him but that seemed to be the, 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 the key for Galway really was what was Lynn and he was really good like he's a really he's a really good powerhouse and then the more the game was going on I thought Clare playing a brother brand of hurling here this isn't this isn't what was meant to happen Galway's physicality was going to kind of get on top of Clare's movement but then they never stopped moving and they asked a hell of a lot of questions and but yet when Clare went two ahead with six minutes to go you thought this is this is it Galway have never been led they a lot of their key players are gone and I thought they're going to kick on they're going to win this and Galway hit three points in three minutes and you're thinking wow that's that's the sign of all Ireland champions and then just to, to work a score up rather than the goalkeeper he, he knows what time is left he sees it's an overtime and he doesn't launch it he plays it out to work the lines to create two overlaps and a brilliant score and it was an end to one of the great days one of the great hurling days and that's not an exaggeration it was an end to one of the most extraordinary hurling days does Michal Donoghue have enough time now between now and next weekend to, you mentioned the puzzle and the jigsaw that Claire managed to present here in Crow Park, to figure out that jigsaw, to be able to put the parts together and figure it out? Uh, yeah, I think he will. I think he will, to be honest with you, because what he'll do is he'll look at Conor Cooney, he'll look at Conor Whelan, he'll look at Mannion, who was unstoppable at times in the first half, and he'll demand more of them. Um, I don't know what the case is going to be with, 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 with Joe Cooney, but or Joe Canning, but when he was tracked today in the second half, and didn't have the space. Joe's a player now who doesn't have the pace of, of your, although he's still pretty quick, but he likes to float around and pick up ball and he can pop balls over the bar. When they went man to man on him, he didn't like it. He didn't like it. And he didn't have the space to, to, to basically opt as director of operations. Whereas Galvin could and Kelly could. Galway didn't have a director of operations when Joe Canning was was uh, was marked and then went off. So I think what he needs to do is 
demand more of, of the marquee, the other marquee forwards, because they are marquee forwards, but they went missing. And Clare got numbers back. And Clare were very competitive under the puckouts, and they won as many puckouts as they could. But it's still very much in the melting pot now. I mean, you, you know, there's no point in even in saying who do you think will win the replay, because we've all got to dissect what we've seen and look at key key margin areas in the game. But really, I think you can't make a judgment on this until you actually see who's fit and able and present themselves for duty next weekend. It's really, it would be illogical really to say now who you think will win it. Would I be right to say that you're of the opinion that we all know there's always a winner and a loser in a draw. Did Galway lose this draw? I don't think so because at the end of the day, Galway had to pull three points with five minutes to go at the end of, of, of extra time to keep themselves in the game. They led throughout the 70 minutes. They had a, an absolutely superb opportunity with Johnny Cohn underneath the Hogan stand here who showed great composure then to put them ahead at the end of extra time and I was glad for him on a personal basis because he, he lived it forever if Clare had gone ahead and won so you know Galway will look to a lot of chances that they had where most people here thought the game was over you know at the end of the normal 70 minutes when they kept ploughing ahead and going 2-3 ahead 2-3 ahead 2-3 ahead 2-3 ahead I think for a fourth time you kind of felt well yeah you know Clare's resistance has to break because you can't keep taking these knocks and Clare just kept coming back at them. So I, 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 I don't think it would be fair to Clare today to say Galway left that behind them, you know. And even when Clare went to two ahead with, with four minutes on the clock at the end of extra time, I never felt this is it, they've done it. You know, even Galway Shorn and their top stars, they were just so game to come back. So if ever there was an actual case to say, yeah, a draw absolutely was the fairest result. Well, that's the greatest example of a draw was the fairest result today. And I'm glad it was a draw, to be honest. Well, it gives everyone another day out next weekend. And uh, like that, he said, we're still trying to get our breaths here in Crow Park. It was a magical evening, a wonderful evening. Nobody goes home with the win. But at the same time, I don't think anybody lost either.